Hello. Welcome to the Open Tuition Advanced Audit and Assurance course for the ACCA exams. This introductory lecture will just help to set the scene. Before you go any further, two very important questions. Number one, have you already studied or are you studying strategic business reporting? If not, you should not attempt AAA. I know the system will allow you to, but you will be in the exam with a completely blank face because AAA is testing the audit of the accounting standards in SBR. So don't sit AAA until you've studied or at least are studying SBR. That's really, really important. The other thing is, are you sitting the right version of the exam? Most of you should be sitting the international version of the exam, which is slightly less onerous than the other one. If you are based in the UK and you work in an audit firm, and you can see that you will be made audit partner eventually, we all have a feeling, don't we? Then you should be sitting the UK version of this exam. In addition, you would have to sit SBR using the UK version. But if UK audit partner is not your route, you should be sitting the international exam. The exam is tough, and as I always say, don't make trouble. So don't sit the UK version unless you have to. It may be your employer says you have to, in which case it's not so bad, but um, it is a bit of extra understanding. Let's introduce the syllabus. And of course, when you look at the syllabus, it always looks dreadfully dry, doesn't it? So you can see lots of theoretical terms down here. And you do need to know some theory, but virtually every mark will be for application of that theory. They're not going to ask you what ISA so-and-so says. They're just going to expect you to apply it in a specific scenario. And when we talk about the regulatory environment, that means that we need a good understanding of the IFRS, the International Financial Reporting Standards. So, for example, IFRS 9 on financial instruments. We need a good understanding of the ISAs, the International Standards on Auditing. Again, there are plenty of those. Documentation, quality management, audit reports and so on, we need to know them. In addition, we also need to know our ethical standards. And very often when I work with students, they seem to know the ethical standards because they're probably in chapter one of their textbook, but often have no knowledge of the others. The only thing that you do not need to know is the standard numbers. So if you quote an accounting standard number or an ISA number, will the examiner be impressed? No. So don't waste your time with numbers. We're just interested in application. Syllabus area B, ethics, very much the same sort of theme that you saw in AA, but the questions will be more sophisticated if you like. So you have got the same principles that you learned in AA, the same threats, but again, they will test you again on other points as well. So the questions are basically more sophisticated. Within professional framework, there's all sorts of other things that we have to look at. So things like, you know, when we're getting new business, things like the fee rules and so on. 
So there's more to ethics than there was before. But usually people don't struggle too much there. Because you take on the role of an audit manager in this exam, then you have to be all over the international standards on quality management. What sorts of things are those do they cover? Things like good leadership, things like the ability to do reviews of the file, things like, again, the ability to delegate or delegation. So very important quality management, which forms part really of practice management. And in particular, we have to think whether it's appropriate to accept a job in the first place. And then if we have accepted it, to keep that job later, asking questions such as whether the client has now outgrown us or whether perhaps we're auditing a competitor of the client and may therefore, should not therefore, be repitching for the work. Syllabus area D is probably, in my view, the most important one, because if you're identifying the work required, that means you must have an understanding of audit risk. And by that, I know You've, you have arrived at this exam. You remember words like inherent risk, control risk, detection risk. Yeah, that's all theory, isn't it? But are you able to look at a specific scenario and isolate the issues, again, which may be wrong? So looking at a specific company, what areas in the account might be wrong? Is it overstatement of PPE? Is it understatement of financial assets, whatever it happens to be in a particular scenario? In addition, of course, it does mean that we would have to deal with, in some circumstances, setting out audit tests. Um, we don't have to do big, big lists of them. It's mainly that you can identify the risks and do some audit work. But if you have a good understanding, especially of the accounting, then it's actually not hard to try and put some audit tests together. So in syllabus area D, you're very much thinking about the planning stage of the audit. In syllabus area E, you're looking at the other end, which is the review stage. So you send out the staff to do the work. Now at the review stage, you have a look, see if they've actually done the work that you told them to. The sort of thing that we see is you might be given a set of accounts. You notice in the balance sheet or SFP that there's an NCI, non-controlling interest. When you review the P&L, you notice there isn't one. So it's that kind of analysis we are able to spot things that don't appear consistent within the accounts or between the accounts and the, the data that we're actually given. So we look at the work that we've done. That links back to quality management. In addition, we then need to formulate appropriate audit reports, clean reports or unmodified and also reports where we have to modify because there isn't enough evidence that should be available, the client's lost the records, or perhaps we have a material misstatement. As well as dealing with audit, we also have to deal with non-audit. And this is a very interesting area of the syllabus. So you might be concerned with giving assurance on key performance indicators like environmental um, emissions or something like that. It could be that you're doing work on a company that your client wants to take over or due diligence. Perhaps we're giving assurance on a profit forecast. So there's a range of things there we might be asked to think about. We may be asked to briefly discuss current issues. At the same time, this is not going to be a 30 mark question, but you certainly need an awareness of what's covered in the materials. 
So issues, for example, as to whether audit should be separate from other work that's offered by the firms, like preparation of accounts and so on. That's area G. And finally, we've got H and I. In reverse order, I, technology, just means that you can use the software, the exam software. So that's not a problem. You, can, you don't need to worry about I, you'll do it. H, however, is very important. We need to demonstrate appropriate professional skills. That's worth 20% of your exam result. So the question then is, well, what are professional skills? Here we are. It's an understanding that you can communicate, you can analyze, that you can exercise skepticism and judgment, and that commercially you can think like a, you know, a business person, so you have commercial ability. Now, I'm not gonna say any more because we've got a separate lecture on those, and once you've watched this, I'd recommend you have a, an initial look at that lecture, but you will probably want to look at it a bit later as well um, when you get some way into your study. So what would an exam look like typically? Typical exam would look like this. Question one is set up at the planning stage of the audit. So there might be some ethical issues about job retention or the staffing, whether certain staff need to be rotated off the audit or whatever. We will always be asked to identify and explain audit risk. Normally, again, to calculate materiality. Also to set out audit work for certain aspects of the audit. All set at the planning stage, 40 technical and 10 professional marks. Question two and three, well, they might swap round a bit, but question two <clears throat> is at the completion stage, the other end, when the audit team come back. So it's looking at the file review, the audit reports that might be issued, 20 technical marks and five professional marks. And finally, question three, <clears throat> could be from any syllabus area, but some of it will possibly come from the non-audit assignments, profit forecast, key performance indicators, due diligence, something perhaps of that nature. Again, 20 technical and five professional marks. I keep saying technical, but what it means is that you've applied technical knowledge to a practical situation. So if at the end of the exam, you've made 80 technical points, but none of them seem to have been related to the scenario, we won't get any marks at all. So technical means applying the knowledge that we've got to the specific situation that we're looking at. At a very superficial level, if you're dealing with a toy retailer, children's toys, and they're talking about stock, or inventory, I would be thinking again, with my accounting hat on, that they may not be able to sell the inventory, therefore NRV might be less than cost. And then with my audit hat on, risk of overstatement of inventory in the soft P and profit in the P&L. We give lots of guidance in our materials. As you study, don't forget the ACCA resources, plenty on the ACCA website, technical articles, guidance from the examining team who really want you to pass, and the recently introduced practice platform where you can practice questions again in the software. Don't forget our resources. Again, we've got the course notes, videos on tuition, plus some on revision. You can ask questions, ask the tutor. Uh, again, um, if you want one of our expert tutors to come back to you, all free of charge. Flashcards, again, to remind you about the core knowledge. Probably a good idea 
to use the SBR flashcards as well for accounting knowledge. Here's the most important thing though. You must buy an up-to-date exam or revision kit from BPP or Kaplan. And it is important, should you prepare for this exam by just using past questions? No, because the knowledge is changing all the time. So you need the up-to-date, you need the, the kit. So could you use last year's kit? No, don't. It would be a very, very expensive mistake to make. Keys to success. Remember, you need to understand the theory, ethical standards, accounting standards, and auditing standards. After that, most of your work is question practice. And you know, when I teach, I see two sorts of students. Some of them read the question, then read the answer. Do they pass? No. Well, they do eventually when they've worked out that wasn't the right approach. And I see other students, they read the question, they spend half an hour planning out the answer, then they read the answer. Do those students pass? Yeah, always. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck. Enjoy the course.